Testing, testing. Okay, I hope this is recording. Um, this is my voice heard uh, as a, an amendment to my ISU for Space and Sciences. The topic I have done is on the Aurora Borealis, and I titled my paper uh, in, uh, Aurora, Magnetic Mysteries of the Earth. And that uh, in the shot is just a nice picture of the Aurora Borealis. Um, I believe that this is computer-generated image uh, from the uh, University of Alaska. Like, it could be wrong, it could be a real image, but it's just some of the contrasting and lighting looks uh, kind of artificial to me, but maybe that's how it looks when you've got it all lit up. In the middle of the day, um, in the middle of the long, wintry Arctic midnight, um, and I don't, don't want to go into too much detail about uh, the project in particular, but we'll go through a couple of images here and discuss the topic that we're reviewing, which is uh, basically what is the relevance of researching this when there are enough problems uh, in our own backyard, so to speak. Um, this is a big part of what I studied. These are the magnetic field lines of the Earth. And uh, these are actually highly charged with energy. And in my research, I came to learn that this system of energy, so far as we've been able to test it and uh, sort of make assumptions at this point, um, this field of energy produces some 3.5 uh, gigawatt, no, 3.5 million gigawatt hours annually. There you go. Um, and to put that into perspective, uh, some of the largest American uh, reactors, nuclear, and I think coal fire is the biggest one. Um, it produced something like two uh, gigawatts annually. And uh, this, these lines around the Earth produce 3.5 million. Pretty sure that's accurate information, and that just gives you sort of an idea um, of the phenomenal power contained in these glowy blue lines. Um, but all this is very new science, um, from what I can tell. There's been some uh, people who have speculated, of course, you know, the steam engine existed in ancient Egypt uh, under the Ptolemaic Empire. Uh, but we didn't make any use of that for quite a number of years. And this has certainly been known uh, since, uh, from my research, at least the early to mid-1800s, I would say, uh, maybe a little later. But electricity and magnetism in general all kind of came about in that time period. And that's when the research really started. Um, and that's very recent in our scientific history. Uh, and uh, we'll go to the next picture here. Now this we've already kind of seen, um, we've seen the magnetic lines, now these that you're seeing come in are images of solar wind. And if you look, I think this is a pink palette, if you look here and here, you can see that these uh, solar winds are actually appear to be entering uh, into the earth and they are actually entering pretty near the poles um, in, in their actual working theory. They're coming right into the poles, um, and the Earth deals with this in a, a very unique way. This is all very new science, um, but in some fashion our Earth is uh, drawing down energy from space through its own protective magnetic field into the poles. We really don't know the ultimate reason for this or the utility of it, but it's very, very fascinating, especially when you consider the levels of energy that, uh, that are in operation here. So all of this is to say that even though this seems kind of, you know, a pie in the sky stuff right now, if you will, um, there are some real tangible benefits. There's the potential to harvest electricity and use electricity and in fact provide free electricity. Um, I don't want to digress too much, but there's a fellow named Nikolai Tesla who dealt with a lot of this kind of wireless um, AC current stuff. And he was way, way ahead of his time in forecasting that we would actually be able to draw on these ionic energies uh, and, and uh, 
dynamo energies that are present in, in normal Earth operations. And at the time, that was, you know, uh, tantamount to sorcery. But now it's uh, coming around. Uh, the science is proving that, uh, you know, sorcery or not, there might be some utility to this. And that kind of starts to get us into the, the point of what we're talking about, which is, um, what is the point of researching this when things are so rough on Earth? Uh, this again is a bit more detailed image just on the relationship between the sun and the winds and the Earth's sort of protective magnetic shell. Again, all this information is pretty new, but I don't want to dwell on this too much. This is just to give a, a little different visualization of what's happening between the Earth and the sun in space. Uh, this is a very elegantly done image. Uh, I use courtesy of NASA, and I've tried to provide links for all the images here. So really, at the end of the day, um, what is the point of researching all this? Well, there are people on the Earth starving. Um, you know, there are wars and natural disasters and all kinds of stuff going on right now. Well, just to kind of uh, give my two cents on it, and hopefully I've, I've backed this up with facts in my presentation and I can do so again here. But right now, to extract energy from the planet um, requires a great deal of energy. And what this represents is kind of like the solar power. Um, though there's a little bit of cost up front, there isn't an ongoing renewed cost for production of this sort of electricity. If we can devise um, a sort of solar sail that could collect or harness or uh, be charged by these aurora energies, of course, those energies would be practically free for the lifespan of the, the collector. Um, and that helps to bring the standard of living up all around the world. A lot of the development of electric power is happening in third world kind of countries. All those countries are wanting to come up to our present standard of living with computers and TV and mechanically assisted agriculture and all this. Well, it's very hard to do when you don't have power infrastructure. And it's very hard for us to provide power infrastructure when we're dealing with such finite amount of resources. And it's my opinion that um, exploration of uh, unknown regions and unknown resources and uh, systems of the earth and its functioning, they will all reveal new sources and types of energy to us if, if we're uh, savvy enough to pick it up. Oh, that's really bad. I'm going to have to stop for a second.